Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Hans Hutiglava. But can I get a witness? We're all fun and funny. Only a week ago, the banner he stood under had a much larger shadow that loomed above it, but now, now his leader had decided to soak his gloves in the blood of his own and then ask his subordinates to do the same. It was only the fact that he pitied the Africans that he even accepted the idea, but perhaps that was what Shank had in mind. It didn't matter now, as his men waited for whatever opportunity they would have to strike within the maze of trees. Rolf and his men spotted a squad of soldiers in the distance, and he could very clearly recognize who they belonged to. Chuckling, he set down the binoculars and turned to face a German and an Angolan. They communicated with hand gestures, bumping his fists together, making angry faces, then making their finger guns. Thankfully, the two seemed to understand. Rolf motioned to his machine gunner. Keep an eye on those men, he said. When they hear what's going on, wait until they're closer. Once they're within firing distance, I want you to give it all you've got. The gunner's face turned a bit un a bit queasy. Rolf nodded, seeing seemingly as a show of in understanding. I get it, you don't want to do this, but this is what we send up for. They could hear uh, indistinct shouting in the distance. An argument? It didn't matter. Once shots were fired, the squad leader forced his mates to quiet down and began traversing through the shrubbery, making sure that whoever was passing would not spot them. As they got close, so they could hear what was being said. It was German and some vague form of African. Hearing the situation deteriorate, they decided to speed up their movement. Past a few layers of trees, a German sentry noticed the strange stirrings in the brush, but before he could open his mouth, he felt a ringing in his ears as a sharp pain ripped through his throat, then his lung, and then a skull. If a massacre happens and nobody's around to hear it, did it really occur? Hey, look, that dead GDP ratio, not bad. Uh, got a couple comments to go through, and we're still fighting the South African War, even though we are honestly not really trying that hard, to be completely frank with you. Yeah. But we're taking the prisoners right now, so if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Again. I think I read this one last time, so if you'd like to read this again, please go ahead. I think I read this. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I didn't. I'll read it anyways. Despite the war front changing every day, there are times when Boers manage to make a push to retreat the American and South African prisoners. However, these men are th uh, then simply contained in camps without anything protected to do, and he... And we have a great need for strong arms and minds, so we shall ask our friends to take all prisoners in, under our custody. Once here, they will be sent to a concentration camp and work camps, where they will, of course, be... Finally learn with what happens to those who endanger the survival of the Aryan race, and will finally serve the Vatalan as all superior races should do, until they fall to the ground, of course. Yeah. Very good. Uh, not bad. And then what else? Anything for tanks? Ah, uh, we could probably throw some stuff on tanks, why not? It takes forever to research stuff, but whatever. And about uh, Boer Industries. Even though our supplies have proven useful, attrition is already rearing its ugly head, and it won't be long before the Boers need supplies again and again and again. Rather than dumping them onto precious supplies we could use ourselves, we can send economic advisors and prefabricated machinery to set up their own military production plants. It'll mostly be simple factories aimed at producing rifles and ammo, but it'll be enough so that they can avoid critical lack of supplies. Oh, Brazil withdraws. Nice. It's not going to help us that much, but you know what? Whatever. Surgency crush. That's always good as well. I mean, I don't want to lose too much men, too many supplies. We don't have any air superiority either, which does suck, but... Eh, oh well. A lot of you guys say this war is not that difficult. Yeah. I'm just not really trying, I'll be honest. I'm really just not trying at all. Um, I'm just here to hold the line. See how far we get in the focus tree as well. Ring to blow. Of course. There's a risk that our Boer friends are overrun despite our help, and in this case, it's better to be prudent and not let our enemies the any slightest advantage. All machinery we lend least to the Boers have been rigged with hidden explosives wired to a central control room. Should a factory fall into enemy hands, it'll simply explode, denying our foe the chance to use it against us. But of course. The Boers will know about this, and it would be better if they didn't. If you want to keep your head on your shoulders, that is, of course. Nice. Yeah, Kevin Rubble. Oh, good job, Kevin Rubble. What a madman. Absolute madman and mad lad. Shield leaning? No. Uh, we want to just straight win. I would like to just straight win, so. Uh, over here, they have forts, level 2 forts. Oh, Biaka's going to die. So be it, so be it. Is that Iberia? They're lacking a lot of stuff here, huh? Uh, there's three divisions here. There's three divisions here. Uh, you guys come over here, maybe. Maybe we could try to strike in here, maybe. Maybe not. Probably not. Oh, look at that lag. Happy 1965, everybody, now. Hope you're having a great, great year. We have about $5 billion in GDP and $44 million in debt. So once we have our debt secured and done and finished off, I might just go with max up army expenditure, maybe. We'll see. 0.8 billion is not bad. Look at that. 0 0.04 billion? Not bad. Because I want to see if we can track here, potentially. It would be quite nice if we could. As much as I want to use chemical weapons... We're not going to for this campaign. Can you guys actually win here? Are we fighting in the mountains? Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, there's no way we can actually win with these divisions. Our divisions are just pretty bad. But my god, is it laggy? Is it ungodly laggy? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Now, we could try to attack here. We tried that last time. And we did okay, but yeah, I just... There's nothing we can do. 
Kind of sucks. And supplies over here are really bad, so that's why we kind of avoided this area at all costs. So if that's the case, you know what? What happens if we decide to kind of pull back? Uh, let's pull back. See if the AI is going to do anything against us. Pull back. See what happens. And if up the industry is rigged to blow, pay Miller's men. Mm, protect Shanks' jets. We could do that. Pipeline of Sansa Bar. We still got some time here. And I'm just here just to cut down the debt. For the most part, really. You want me to be on the front lines? Maybe they'll attack the front lines more if we're not there. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, the Iberians just don't have any equipment, do they? Yeah, I could have done a sequence earlier on, but whatever. I'm not going to have a ceasefire. No. Shield leaning, no. Supply the boards. Hey, there goes Bennett. We don't need to do any of this stuff either. Just keep the PP. Keep the PP for now. I could combine these guys to make these guys even stronger, but... Hmm. Is that two infantry divisions? Yeah. Develop more industries. Rig to blow. Insurgency training, maybe? We're going to help them as much as they possibly can. Oh, yeah, let's do that one. In order to lessen the pressures on our allies, we need to force the American puppets to worry about their own home ground. There may be many boars still living in occupied areas, but willing nonetheless to fight for us. We shall infiltrate small teams beyond enemy lines. They shall we will, they will reach for these groups of loyal collaborators and teach them basic insurgency tactics, especially aimed towards sabotaging industrial facilities and spreading chaos and panic with small but far-reaching terrorist attacks against local politicians or police forces. Yes, please. Look at that. Point zero zero eight. Isn't that beautiful? And then we have 0.43 billion in surplus. Ah, gotta love it. War is profitable, my friends. This is really sad they're not even attacking us. Yeah. We're just kind of hanging out. Oh my gosh. Why is it still going down so much? Are you guys suffering from attrition at all? A few of you guys are, but it's only because they're moving. That's literally it. Yeah, let these guys deal with it. Actually, hmm. Bog down fronts. Hmm. Expeditionary force, give control state, no. We can't take any other puppets and stuff like that, so. Whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know why the AI is just refusing to attack. I mean, one thing, it was we were, had all these divisions under us, but was, whatever. The message. For many months, our men have fought <clears throat> and bled in the fields and the jungles of Africa, sacrificing all to maintain the supremacy of the Aryan man. Even in this dark continent, at long last, this effort would appear to garner some attention. The Reichsfeer SS himself, Heinrich Kimmler, appears to have taken personal note of our bold struggle. Our friends in Burgundy reached out to Reichskommissar Hutik himself, expressing their interest to send direct frontline support to us Africa to aid us in this war of ours. Such news has thrown Hutik into a frenzy of pre preparation. In Quillamane, lavish events are being planned to appropriately host their Burgundian partners, while meanwhile on the front lines. Offensives are being drawn anew as us African forces prepare to deliver large blows to offend forces, all in the hopes of impressing their soon-to-arrive Burgundian comrades. We must prove our worth. And insurgency training. The arrival. From the moment the Burgundian troops unloaded at the docks of Quillamane, the all too familiar SS insignia glaring from the side of their helmets, us African brass stood ready with their plans all drawn up for the cooperation of Burgundian and us African forces. It was just the surprise of the us African generals then, when the Burgundian officers informed them that there would not, in fact, be any cooperation. As quickly as the Burgundians landed in Quillamane, they left for the front lines. The lavish reception, which they were so meticulously plotted out, were left abandoned. Their accommodation for Burgundian troops were left vacant. The only choice of European SS left in the city was the dust kicked up by the motorcade on the way south. For the Burgundians not have arrived to wine and dine, nor have they arrived to collaborate with others, they come to Africa seeking blood, and they seek to do so by their own accord. If Hutek wishes to prove his worth, he will have to kick his efforts into high gear, else risk falling behind in his own war, in the presence of the most reserved or revered Burgundian SS. Let's slip the dogs of war. Sure, guys. Hey, we have no more debt. Look at that. Can we invest it? Nice, not bad. Now, can we, uh, we do this. Can we, let me max it out. Looks like a point zero four billion. We go all the way here. We, oh, that's not bad. Right, so if we go all the way to the, to the right side here. Um, out of supply, supply consumption is minus 5%. Organization 7.6%. Go up to here. 23%. Supply consumption goes down by minus 15%. And right now, if we go max it out. Army treating actual effectiveness. Monthly professionalism goes up by 0.15. All the way to the left, it goes up by point. Zero five, so we still get a surplus, and we're spending a little bit more money, which means it should help out real GDP growth. It's okay, as long as we have no debt. I'll feel pretty good. Oh, they are attacking! Look at that. Oh, they are attacking us here too. Give them time; they'll hurt themselves enough that we won't really get. I thought Bra Brazil got rid of that. Huh. Insurgency training, development triad. That's not bad. Pipeline sense of bar. I don't want to pay his men for ninety days. Use our reserves to pay for the service of Central African Garrison? Yeah, we're kind of okay. 
protect his jets, why not? Our brothers in Sudwest Africa possess the largest air force out of all the Africa Shield. Then why is that idiot Shank sending all of them to die against inferior American planes? Why? After the war, I'll have a proper discussion with him about this, preferably in an interrogation chamber and with proper instruments, but... There isn't much time to do all that now, so I'll need to ensure that our air wings are properly escorted before the engagement and protected when they retreat. It feels like I have to do everything myself. It's unfortunate. Hello, were we attacking? Oh, did they take that back? Well, that sucks. You know what? The Americans want to attack. Let them attack. I'm here just to recoup some of our losses, so... Wow. And this is... Union South Africa. Oh, there it goes. Hadrish. Goodbye, Hadrish. Guys, please don't attack if you... Oh, Burgundy, don't attack if you don't have to, man. Yeah, very fearsome Burgundy SS when they just kill their own soldiers off. Sounds very Burgundy to do, but, you know, whatever. Ooh, what happened here? Oh, Gorbachev. Whoa. Point zero one, huh? Russian Democratic Republic. A Korea bureaucrat. Huh. Alright, whatever. Insurgency training, good. Protect the jets. The game doesn't, is not sure what we should do with all this stuff, so. Yeah. Just keep defending for now. Let the tanks die. 1% growth, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Um, I don't want to do that one. Mm, defensive oh, pipeline of Zanzibar. But then again, we want the development trial, so screw it. Pay Miller's men. What are these debauched mercenaries that Miller calls soldiers? Don't these men have any loyalty other than money, any interest except for chasing skirts? Do they realize the extent of the treason? I can't believe it. This is getting out of hand. Harsh measures will have to be taken, and Miller will have to pay for his crimes against the Vatalan, but for now, victory is most, more important. Even though I loathe to even pronounce the words, I will pay those dudes out of Ost Africa's pockets. My patience is running thin. I hope the war ends before I completely run out of it. We use the reserves to pay for it, so we'll get a little bit more depth. So, that sucks. Oh, hello. Nice, Borman 1. Were we missing anything here besides oil? No, which we're actually... We're okay with it. So let's not mess with that part. Buy guns from Germany. Do we need more guns? I think we do, right? Yeah, we can really use more guns. Well. Ah, oh, look at all that lag. You gotta love it. Can we not invest? Hmm. There you go. You can buy a few more guns. What does that do to our GDP? A little bit of debt. Pay debt. There you go. And reserves. Negative point zero zero four billion. Yeah, they are attacking again, which is pretty nice to see. I want the South Africans to really lose. Really, really lose. Okay, so now they're losing. Now our guys are losing. It's not good. Um, it's not happy, guys. There you go. Go back on the front lines. Two million manpower is not bad. Wow. They actually lost. Go figure. But how much? They got plenty of manpower. They got four factories. Stockpile wise, they should have some equipment. Plenty of infantry equipment. Protect exchange jets. Yes, please. And then, Delvalma Trya. In order to win the war, the Africa Shield needs to be united not only in bodies, but also in mind. I've established a joint research and development office between the Reichs Commissariat. And our best and brightest shall devise together new ways to win the war. Why do I have the feeling that, no matter what, I'll be the one providing the funds, supplying the personnel, and generally doing all the work again? Because you secretly enjoy it. Doesn't really stretch out their lines too much, which does suck. Heat integration. Come over, over here, make our guns even better if possible, yes. Supply-wise, we can still do a little bit more over here. There you go. I'm going to actually take you as well to go over there, too. Are we still mobilizing more? Yeah, we are. Holy crap. Hmm. I want to go this area here, though. Any upgrades for our generals? No. Kind of sad. Ooh. Sorry. No deficit here. It is what it is. 
Uh, they are slowly trying to attack. And I think eventually we'll get some help from Borman too, right? So. Oh, happy July, everybody. Oh, they already paid it off. Nice. There you go. You can have that much. It's not much, but better than nothing. Oh, Rio GB Gotha goes down. There you go. About middle, middle tier is okay with us. Pay me those men. So be it. Tungsten, steel. Now we're good. Supplying the boards. We don't have enough guns. Oh, well, maybe we do. We'll send a shipment of weapons to the Boer Republic and aid the ongoing conflict. Sure, why not? Pay those men. Do them a triab. Are we in debt? Yeah, we're okay. Followed up with Pipeline of Sansibar. The RS Salam is our largest dockyard and where most of our supplies from the wider I come from should it be bombed or unrendered unusable. We would lose most of our reinforcements. We must ensure this flow never stops. On one hand, the docks will be fortified and protected against enemy bombings and terrorist attacks. On the other, we shall increase the funding of level funding uh, or level of infrastructure connecting to RS Salam to kill the main, allowing us to immediately receive everything and distribute what's needed to our troops at the front. Oh, you're already here. Nice. I want these guys to attack, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, tank divisions, kill yourselves off. We don't have a lot of stability, do we? Oh. Inconceivable. Uh, if you're attacking, this might be the best time to attack as well. Help support the attack with our infantry divisions. Yeah, it's going to be costly, but that's okay. Kick him back out. We want Kimberly eventually, too. Nice. But hey, no debt. can't invest in it, which is weird, but whatever. It's actually going getting worse, which sucks. What if we did? Most is going to civilian spending, too. Holy crap. Kind of nuts. Why, Germany? Why are you doing this all the way over here? Of course, we're getting attacked right here, too, but still. For the DC, not bad. What a mess. Far Eastern Soviet Republic. Looks large. Soblin won. Nice job, Soblin. Nice job. Hang out, hang out, hang out. We're still missing a lot of equipment. We still have a thousand guns, though, which is pretty nice. Who are we losing here, too? That's not good. I'll come down here. Keep holding out if you can. My god, these American tanks. If anything, at this point, we just got to combine these guys all together. Development tried. Not bad. Pipeline sounds so far. Mm. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing okay. You're doing fine, Carl. Combine them. And after pipeline to Sansafar, we will do what? Defense industry development. Our army needs more supplies than we can really produce. The number of slaves we employ is not important. They are but fuel for Germany's greatness, destined to be consumed. So we shall dramatically increase subsidization to the military and industry. Tanks, cannons, rifles, we produce we will produce everything we need by ourselves. Let no one say we don't fight to the better end. Still can't invest it. Dang it. American tanks really don't want to give up, do they? You guys are going a little crazy here, too. How much manpower does these guys have? Hetzog? We have five divisions. That's a lot of manpower. You have about roughly the same amount of factories, too. Huh. Let's make sure no one uses gas down here. I bear gains control by... Oh, oh Algeria. Oh, huh. okay. Very cool. Very cool. How's this looking? Ooh, Republic of Indonesia. Free Indonesia is not looking too good now, is it? Mogok. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, this guy's about to die. Wales unifies peacefully? Wow. Consumer goods? Yes. We're just casually making money, making money. That's all we really care about here.
Man, look how much we're going to do about that. Are you getting even more money now? Slightly more growth? We just max it out. There you go. Is that any better? Conscripted tribes. Eh, uh, well, let's put a power out. Unified holdouts? Why not? With the Mayakana and their puppets pushing against our lines, we need to improve our defensive tactics. The core of interconnected, fortified holdouts, equipped with strong anti-air batteries and anti-tank weaponry, shall ensure an efficient defense against most attacks. And devising unified contingency plans for concentrated pushes will do wonders in keeping the enemy at bay until we muster enough forces for a counterattack. Ah, oh, yes. My goodness, how many men have we lost in this theater? It's about 17,000? That's, pre that's pretty sucky, but, you know, it happens. Yeah, fighting into mounds would be a bad idea. Yeah, they might be able to win in Kimberly if they actually really tried. I'll let the, uh, these guys try it. Two divisions with some slight light tank support. Should be able to push it over. Nice. You guys move in because we're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving as soon as we show up. Bye bye. And Samara's unified them. Weapon instruments? A thousand more guns? Sure, why not? No. No. Resources from Germany. Buy a slight bit more guns. Eh, we got the reserves for it. We buy them, and so we can just give them to the boars. Why not? That is button number. With almost no growth. I can't invest that. God dang, why can't we invest it? Nah. What if we were to do ta tam tax cut? Oh, that's hike. But cut. Increasing our income by 15%. That'd be pretty bad, though. Military austerity? Probably not going to do that one. Yeah. F2 weapons, not bad. Okay, keep going with that, with that research. I'm going to just do a lot of the focuses, too, so... And then we'll do conscript the tribes. Our regular forces aren't enough to fully engage our enemies, and therefore we will be forced to lower our requirements and bolster our garrison with locals. There are some natives which we tolerate as they aren't part of the inferior races. These primitives are loyal enough to be trusted for conscription against Americana, and if they aren't, we can always send their women and children into special concentration camps, where they will remain until the war is won. The first ones who flees will all pay the price, and the price for cowardice is very, very high. Well, there's a little bit more stability, but what else is new? What else is new? My god, those... American tanks just almost killed themselves there. I love it. God, I don't want to kill these tanks off so badly, but we gotta wait. It's kind of sucky that they just throw all their boys here. Can we actually help you out here? Could you actually win if we actually helped out? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. That sucks. South African military. I still have not played South Africa, I think, yet. Huh. Of all nations, I've not played as yet. How many, how many people live in South Africa? 4.25, half. So about 5 million between these two. Roughly 6, 7 million ish, 8 million ish. Are they really that many millions in South Africa? Huh. Those American tanks, not looking so good. Unified holdouts. Aryan only SS. Very nice. Why can't we do anything here? Nice. More for anti tank guns, huh? Do we have any militia? No, I don't think we do. Oh, garrisons. Uh, well, that's the case. First of all, let's get rid of these guys. That'll be a little better. Followed up with what? Garrisons. Can you convert you guys to militia? Light infantry. It's literally just straight light infantry. They don't need anti-tank for this stuff. Which would be actually very beneficial. Oh my gosh, why didn't I do this earlier? Save some of our equipment, man. Convert them all. There you go. That should save us a lot of anti-tank equipment. There you go, yeah. Minus 36, so much better. Oh my goodness, so much better. Unified holdout program? That's not bad. Well, we don't need it, but that's not bad. After we can script the tribes, simplify arms productions. 
We need, we we need weapons, more weapons. Our enslaved workforce isn't skilled enough to produce the most modern weapons at our disposal, so we'll have to find ways to make the productive process both simpler and more economic for a limited resource pool. Prefabrication, modular designs, removing costly or redundant parts, replacing advanced components. We will try everything in our power to ensure that every man has a rifle in his hands. Lose retention, product efficiency growth goes up, more, less resource speed, more factory output. That's so much better. So much better. Better here, too. Motorized could really use more motorized, too, but whatever. They just death stack. They AI. On both sides here like the death stack. It's very annoying. Our supplies over here. Looking like it wouldn't be great for us to get involved. Can you go that way, maybe? I'm not going to tech there, either. Makes, there's no point to. Holdouts. Meh. Whatever. All that I care about is the economy. Ah, growth is not bad. 0.1 billion. And we can't even do anything with it. Why can't we invest it? Take it off. I'll see what happens. Alright, now it's February. Now we're we actually fighting in the battle here. We're losing pretty badly, huh? No, nope, can't do anything. That sucks. Germany, you wanted to attack here. Uh, where are your divisions? Maybe you force the attack here. There you go. Sort of worked. Supplies are okay-ish. And simplify arms production. With everyone is effing useless. That's enough. I've had enough. That's evident that I'm the only one who actually fighting to win the war. All others are merely playing effing games. This is not a game where fighting to protect the Aryans in Africa to defeat the Americaner. This is not a effing game. <coughs> Excuse me. They can't be trusted. Really can't be trusted. Shane can't be trusted. No one can be trusted. No one. Traitors. Traitors everywhere. I'm alone. But I will win alone, and then everything will be right. Everything. What is the uh, Drums of War bonus right now we get? Attack, output. A lot more factory output. Holy crap. Not bad. Actually, you might be able to win here down here, too. There you go. Now we're moving a little bit more. Because we got plenty of men. Oh, we're demobilizing. Somewhat. Let me invest. God dang it. Oh, GP went down. Because a game will let me invest. Hmm. Oh. Now there's even more lag? Okay. Not bad. Oh, hey. What's up, man? Yeah, of course. Not bad. See what you can do. Oh, that's actually really bad there for you, huh? Electrical exercise is going to the two. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. If that's the case, yeah. Uh, go back this way. That's pretty bad. Or we could just go right there. But that wouldn't really help us out, would it? No, it would not. That sucks. I hate supply issues. Went down and it goes slightly back up. No, we went flat line up and dip. Simplify arms productions, my friends. Simplify, simplify, simplify. What are we building up right? More prisons? An army base. That's good. Anything else here? We need more civvies, more millies. We got plenty of power grid, though. Oh, how'd, how'd Russia do? They lost so badly. Holy crap. Burn them all. Came to Soldatin. Uh, probably burn them all. Shank complains that his bombing runs can't breach the American bunkers. Then we'll burn them with napalm, with anything that can catch them fire. He won't oppose me. I won't let him. The Americana, the Canadians, the Anglos, all will burn. We'll scream and curse the leaders for having sent them into the dark continent. The darkness will eat them all, one by one, until there we are the only ones left. Let's see Shank's face when I can do his job even better than him. Nice. Hello. Yeah, sometimes you want to attack. Sometimes you don't want to attack Borman. That's a bit crazy to do down there. I love that they're still attacking us like this. I love it. Borman, please. Don't be like the Americans. Yeah. A lot of death stacking. If the AI was smart, they'd send planes down here. And we could actually do something with this. Hey, you can invest more money. Yay. Hopefully it goes up higher. Is there some threshold we have to get to just so we can actually invest that all, all the money? God, I don't want to tech down there, but technique would be so bad. Oh, uh, sure, guys. Sure. So we have a surplus of anti-tank. We have a surplus of artillery. Slight bit. We're working on the infantry equipment. We're working on motorized as well. We lost another production unit, which sucks. Yeah, we need more production units, just period. 
Uppington? I don't know why our allies won't attack either. Please. The only one that's attacking is Germany. Why? I just want to use child soldiers. Hold out resources. We could buy more guns. But we're good. Okay. Happy May, everybody! Barbara's getting slightly worse, though. Not bad. Burn them all. And child soldiers? Oh, yes, please. Uh, but we'll read about desperate times first. It's not my fault that things turned out the way they did, not at all. I was the one who prepared for this eventuality. I knew one day we would end up at war with the South Africans. I prepared for this. I armed the Boers so they might fight for their freedom from the Anglos and the Mongol dogs of the ANC. I built the most feared and powerful Reichskommissar in the Pact, so that I would defend the positions of the Reich from the outside powers. I was the one who carefully planted traps and mines all throughout my territories to stop the advance of the enemy. I am not to blame for why things are becoming effed up. It's Müllers and Shanks. Shank, that airhead. That literal airhead, never caring what's going on on the ground, would rather fly around in his little toy jet fighter than like he could win the war with a few aerial tricks. He makes a name for himself a long time ago, and he uses it to rob the loof off a blind at every turn. His hogs, his, he hogs his aircraft for himself, and tells me to my face that I won't be able to handle them. It's an effing plane you tell to bomb it whatever you want. And then there's that rat dude, Mueller. He'd sell his entire operation to the highest bidder if he had a half chance. Half a chance. Even if that bidder was General Motors. He uses the proceeds he takes from his investors and pays for mercenaries just so he has some company on hunts. And he'd rather hunt another effing animal than send his forces down to Cape, take Cape Cod. That fortification hit line in Katanga. What the F is he thinking? I told the right to remove them, and they never listened. I knew all along they were useless traitors, and they never believed me. Now look at your daring darling colonies now, Germany, stopped on the battlefield by a number of South Africans and Negroid Americans. This is your defeat, your shame, your greatest mistake, looking us right in the face. No, I must not believe that. There's no way I can solve this. It requires everything I can get at my, my disposal and more unitary control over the South Africa or the Africa Shield. I have to do this myself with everything I have. Mueller wants more money for his soldiers? No. He won't get a single Reichsmark. Not anymore. Not for me, at least. Perhaps he should go to his masters, beg for some more dollars. It seems like he likes them more, with that Americana stamped on each bell rather than a swastika. We'll find more soldiers, more than Mueller could ever provide. Children will do. Twelve years old, at least. Ah, no, let's make it ten. They can already take up a rifle. They'll learn. Or they'll die. It's such a cruel world. With a high and mighty democracy-loving Americana shoot a child, even of an inferior race. I truly hope so. Or their moral qualms will be their undoing. Shooting children in the face. Nothing like Africa. I love Africa for that. Okay, you, you should be able to win down here. Let's be real. Carl, please don't ruin any more of our tanks. Happy June! Industry management, very nice. Ooh, research. I love the research bonuses. Consumer goods production factor, yes. I'm glad we did get them, though. Very nice. It's a very nice addition. Come on, get down there. I'll take that so you can have some supply as well. Oh. Very good, very good. Are they all attacking us here? War of Insurrection? I mean, there was a, the comments for me to play Japan and uh, Yunnan and TNO, but let's we'll see what happens. Hey, everyone, but let's go ahead. Nope. Keith Manshoop, huh? Burn them all. Heckfire. The gentle buzz of insects consumes the air, grass shakes and rustles in the hot breeze. Farmers done with the pre dawn labor march through the fields towards some eager to eat the breakfast their wives have prepared. The village buzz rises, rubbing through the village. Uh, like a sweaty hand, villagers lift their heads, concerned about the intensity of the rigid hum. It's deafening now. The buzz is everywhere. They look across the ground for the usual suspects, bugs and hard-shelled beetles. They look everywhere but up. The buzz pounds in their skulls. It echoes in their bones and souls. The buzz tears at their ears and teeth. The buzz flies from beyond the horizon and is made manifest. Forged in steel and oil, the villagers finally look up towards the shaking, buzzing heavens. They scream as loud as they can as though trying to drown out the buzz, but they can't. They don't. The buzz is only silenced by the metal rain and liquid fire. The buzz only quiets, perhaps out of horror, for the burning chemicals that pierce the earth and clay. As the plane flies away in its mission or resounding success, the village lies behind it. Black ashes and green fires whisper and mutter in the morning wind. Even the buzz of the insects is gone burned away. The bomb lives only as it is falling. Let them know true fear. Have you ever felt true pain? Have you ever felt what true fear is? Fear of dying. Dying with your skin falling from your limbs, your flesh covering in necrotic plagues before your eyes until your eyes burn inside your sockets. And then you die, screaming without mouth and tongue, crying without eyes and tears, cursing your mother for giving birth to you only so that you could die in such a horrible way. And the Americana will die. They will all die, of course. Oh, Mario won. Look at that. 
They, they think me too a coward and a traitor like Shank and Mueller. Me, they will pay for their impudence. Impu impudence. They will pay with their lives. And once I will win this war, I will ensure that no one can speak ill of me or the Vatalan. The old guard returns the relevance. Chemical, chem chemical arsenal in the South Africans. Gas, gas, gas. Oh boy. Funny gas man. I love gas man. Hmm. Guess what? No debt. Happy July. Should be able to win it pretty easily. Um, yeah, this this game stop right there sucks. But supplies just sucks everywhere else. Wow. Look at those spikes and Wow, how did they get these spikes? We're gonna max this out. Um there's nothing we can do to max this stuff out either. Just kinda hanging out. He's pretty good on attack though. Pretty decent on attack. Infantry equipment's looking good. Anti tank is looking pretty good. Motorized or not looking so good. We're slowly, 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 slowly pushing in. I can hear would be probably a big old mistake because we it's just mountains suck. The Manila crisis. Ooh, nice. Oh well, yes, keep attacking. Let's see what happens. Can we actually attack him here and maybe do well? Maybe not. It's pretty costly using these tanks like this. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kindle so Dalton. Yes, please. Good. Can't believe we actually won there. I'm surprised Germany won't give us more equipment, actually. Okay, yeah, buy stuff from them. Can we actually win here, maybe? From cradle to combat. Oh, what's not to love? Uh, that's old. The village had been operating as normally as life could be in the dense jungles of a German Africa for the 11 year old Muchoki. He woke up as early as possible, done in the clothes he had been provided to by the sea scary men with masks who constantly walked around the area. His mother never liked them, especially when they hit people with their guns, but ever since they made his father disappear, she always called them the Mashetani Giza, the Dark Devils. However, none, could, none of that mattered now. All Muchoki had to be concerned about was waking up early enough to go to the caves, mine as long as he could, and finally get out for dinner. However, as the day began, young Muchoki knew that something was amiss, especially as the smoke rose into the air and a small metal truck followed by a bigger one pulled out into the village, sending all the adults knew he knew scattered into their homes quickly. A shorter, older man got out of the small truck, barking and yelling at the Mashatani Giza. Muchoki's German lessons were going slow, but he could hear him yelling something about the children. It was then that a shiver ran down his spine as he began kicking down the doors, forcefully carrying children into the large truck. Suddenly, with an angry point of a black glove, the old man ordered the devils to grab Muchoki himself, forcing them away from his crying mother and into the back of the huge truck, as it roared alive and carried him away from his village. Abdul, Darweshi, Nijwajka, and a few other Muchoki's friends joined him in that tightly packed truck in hours away to a new Lao scary place. The devils ordered them out of the truck and marched them into a dark concrete room. There the short man began yelling at them in German, pointing to some smaller versions of what the devils wore themselves. They began to put them on and were marched away, destined for a long field where they each got a German-made rifle and were told to shoot, shoot, and shoot, and figure out how to put the bullets back in. If they didn't, they were beaten. And went well without dinner, as Muchoki would learn on his first night. Finally, after weeks of his cycle and a bit of learning some more German, Muchoki and his friends were brought onto a truck out into an open savanna, where they began digging trenches. It was there that the bullets started being fired towards them, and everyone had picked up their guns and shot back. With a big truck with a cannon on the top slugged forward, the short man climbed on top of the trenches, yelling and screaming, demanding they shoot better, or else they wouldn't be fed for a week. It was there that Muchoki felt the blood and gray matter splash across his face, as the short man's head collapsed upon itself, and he fell into the trench. Muchoki could only hear gunfire foreign screaming, and the cries of his friends as the men on the hill came near. Older men declared war, but it's the young that must fight and die. <sighs> oh, Reinega den Sudan. Chemical arsenal enemies. Provoke direct American attention. Terms of world be silence. Or Bruder mode. I think I did this one last time too, but we'll probably go this one too. Yeah, I think we'll do this one. Don't be so harsh on me. This isn't a fratricide style. This is justice of the highest kind. I don't need proof of the betrayal. I know it. They knowingly hindered the war effort to ensure our defeat. The Reich's defeat, my defeat, but they failed, and now they'll pay all of them. For first, I'll win this war. I don't need them. Not anymore. I'll need the resources, though, and their industry. Not their men, especially Mullers. They'll get a court martial and a firing squad. Perhaps, too. Merciful, but I have little time for the men. For little men. For my former brothers, instead, I have a few new batch of gas, the most potent my scientists could ever produce. It'll be my thanks to them. Now, for the humiliations, for the bright betrayal, now I will be alone and. No one will a, be able to betray me. Fifty-year flashback. The patrol was as regular as it normally was. Lieutenant of the platoon shepherded his militia man through their daily checks as quickly as they could. The quicker they finished their sweep of the area, the quicker they could get back to relaxing. It was really the only part of the day that the lieutenant disliked. The patrol was hot, filled with mosquitoes and other nasty bugs, and generally pointless, after all. The only danger. To camp this far behind the front lines was an occasional German bomber that slipped through the cracks of the American air defense. As the lieutenant finished his thought, he heard the distinctive sound of one of the flying machines, growing closer by the second. A quick glance up over the trees, and it was clear that the plane was a few of th uh, things. 
It was a jet, German, and it was flying straight for the platoon. In an instant, the lieutenant shot into his commanding demeanor, yelling for his men to scatter as he ducked down behind a rock. He braced for the inevitable explosion and the screams that would come with it. The roar of the jet washed over the men like a wave, but the whistle of a bomb and the blast of the explosion did not follow. The lieutenant, stunned, tried to figure out what could have happened. Was it possible that the plane did not see them? Could some divine stroke of luck have prevented the pilot from dropping his payload? Could the bomb have been a dud? After a moment, he rolled over, looking for the plane. That's when he noticed a sudden fog that had blanketed the hill. He got back on his feet, gesturing for his men to follow, but his chest was tight and his nose wouldn't stop running. His platoon woozily made their way down out of the fog, but one by one, they began to collapse. Some started to scream, the gurgling shrieks piercing the jungle air. Suddenly, the lieutenant's legs gave way. He tried to stand back up, but his arms and legs jerked uselessly. He tried to scream, but his breath was gone and his lungs would not respond. He tried to inhale, but found his mouth paralyzed. His body spasmed uncontrollably as raw, unfiltered terror rocketed through his brain in its final moments. His mind raced and slowed and stopped as he expired. The jungle lay sound, the first witnesses to the first deaths to the next stage of war on the Dark Continent. There's no end to the cruelty of a madman's war. The fall of East London. Despite the increasing involvement of the U.S., it seems the scales are tipping in the German favor. Today, the Africa Shield managed to fully occupy the city of East London. After a string of defeats suffered by the OFM coalition in the East, the Boer insurgent army, supported by several elements of the Reich's Commissariat of Africa, had pushed the front line far enough to threaten the core of the South African Federation. Despite losing its status as an academic center due to its years of apartheid, which saw most of its white population leaving for greener pastures, the city was still an important logistical junction, allowing supplies from Cape Town and the increasingly frequent American shipments to directly reach the Eastern Front. The city had been heavily fortified for the coming assault, with several artillery and anti-aircraft emplacements scattered in the many squares and parks dotting the city, while the outskirts had been torn down and replaced with interlocking bunkers, trenches, and minefields. Still, this wasn't enough to hold off the attackers, as a joint German Boer task force used napalm and heavy artillery to clear out the outer defenses, creating a breach large enough for the close quarters specialists to reach their intended targets. The garrison fought back valiantly, with important support from those civilians who preferred to fight and die rather than live in slavery, but in the end they were forced to concede more and more ground until at last defense line was hurriedly formed around the harbor. All possible supplies were loaded on any available ship to not let it fall in German hands, but many were left behind and had to surrender and face the war prisoners' camps. The American commander in South Africa has vowed to free the people of the National Socialist Yoke, and already rumors are starting to circulate about heavier investments in the war, but this defeat is drawing heavy criticism for the how the American expedition was ill-prepared for this conflict, and many doubt that the tides of war will change. Is this the end of freedom for in Africa? And yet the war goes on, which we got more reserved. And you know what? It's great. It's, it's, it's great. You know, after we just, if we use a little bit of gas, if we just use a little bit of gas, <laughs> you can do really flipping well here, apparently. So, yeah, even though we have fewer divisions now, which does suck, but, uh, whining and dying. A Wilhelm Ritter von Talma stepped out of his helicopter to see two rows of Wehrmacht honor guards, a shawl helmet shining in the fading sunlight, stiffly saluting him in their freshly starched dress uniforms. Rex Komsa Hutig was awaiting at the door to his compound, arms clasped behind him and making a smile that concealed obvious annoyance. Gerhard von Tommel, what an unexpected surprise. I was expecting Rex Komsa Müller. Unfortunately, the Rex Komsa was preoccupied with affairs of state and could not attend, von Tommel replied, so he sent me in his stead to negotiate our next course of action. I see, said Hutig, but first I was thinking we have a bit of a dinner when Rex Komsa Schink arrives before we do anything else. Despite von Thoma's preconceptions of Hutig as a dour man, he knew how to be a good dinner host. Some of Germania's finest chefs, pre-war vintage champagne, and um, absolutely superb dry-age filet mignon, all combined to make this the most sumptuous supper he had eaten since he had been in South Africa. When the meal was finished, Hutig noted or nodded to one of his servants, all German, probably because he was too paranoid to let Africans manage his household, and a small fleet of staff swooped in and flashed. The plates were cleaned and cleared. The tablecloth was replaced, and the empty champagne flutes were swapped out for the full ones, and the servants resumed their stoic positions by the door. Now, before we dessert, gentlemen, I want to make a toast to our survival contributor today, O Capitals Menace, who takes suit up and raised the champagne in action shank and von Toma mirrored. But alas, we cannot truly celebrate until we have purged all the Reich's enemies on the continent, and all the traitors within it. Wh what Africa, adieu. Siegfried Müller knelt in the tall grass, skinning the freshly slain gazelle with a hunting knife. He relished the feeling of watching the sun set over the savannah, a weapon in one hand and the pelt of one of the dark continent's great beasts in the other. He often wondered whether he could just never just never return to Leopoldville and stay on the safari for the rest of his life, but he never went through with it, after all. It would mean leaving behind all his trophies of previous hunts. Carrying two gazelle skins back to his helicopter, Miller decided to pick up the radio and check in how the poor dude von Tommel was doing at Hutig's uh, strategy meeting. Adler Eins to Condor Eins, come in. How's Willie doing over? Over. The radio stayed silent for a mo few moments, but when it crackled back to life, it made Miller blanch. Here's his Condor Eins while well, taking fire on the helipad from Hutig's men. The co pilot is down. We're trying to. Three more on the left side. We're trying to take off, but there's no sign of von Tommel. We need. The transmission ended with a scream and a burst of submachine gun fire. Miller changed the frequency on the radio and picked it up again. Rolf, come in, Rolf, it's Siegfried. I want you to have all my personal effects in my office packed up and on the next flight to Germania. Legally, illegally, I don't care. I want you on that flight, too. Bring anything you don't want to live without. Don't go to the office. Send someone else to do it. With any luck, we'll be having tea in the Tiergarten by this time next week. Goodbye. 
He turned to the pilot and said, time to take off. Back to the airport, Bill. Rex, come on, sir. No, 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 no. Not there. Just anywhere that isn't part of this garbage second colony. No more distractions. Heil Hutig. And here we go, my friends. And now this is part of the map that we need to see. Actually, do we assume everything? Yeah, gross Africana show like that. Yes, please. Live reports, reports. So reports frequency is only updated when the next report arrives. If a live report is set to off, changes to the situation will display only when the next report arrives. Failure. Map. Initializing. Devastation. Collapsing. 0%. This is very good. Very good. Very good. Winning orders. Easy. easy. Oh. Easy difficulty makes for a casual playthrough of the gross Afghanistan show like stuff. Playing this difficulty will give you experience the entire story to the end. Um, medium. More or less exactly like a TNO desert design it. Experience a normal playthrough. No changes. Eat hard. Hmm. Insane. Safe float for a month. It will be an incredible undertaking. Custom. Oh, that's kind of cool. Actually, that's really awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Awaiting orders? Can we close out of that? Because I don't mind saving now. So but, and I remember when I originally did this, a lot of people said to just don't finish the war too soon or you could start the whole devastation thing way too early or you can postpone it until later. So, Africa forevermore. We achieved the impossible. The war against the feckless South Africans and the Judeo-Bolshevik masters in Washington have been won. The traitors in Vinhook and Leopoldville have been removed from their offices. Only Stott Hitler, Hutzig stands tall and nothing will stop him from achieving his vision for Africa. Already the factories are humming and releasing their fumes in preparation for a future of prosperity and the fields and mines are filled with laborers gathering metals and rubber for our soldiers. And without the traitors that left the degenerates and the rebels to their own devices, we have access to even more resources to exploit. No one can expose us. With the flanks secured and without the bureaucrats from Germania interfering with their work, the reins of the Reichstag are in our hands. Stahet the Hutek can realize his vision for a pan African Aryan Empire, where the German race can settle and prosper and where the natives learn his place. Our triumph is inevitable. Stahet the Hutek will be the master of Africa, just like Hitler was the master of Europe, and will follow him wherever he will lead us. Glory to the Reichstag, glory to the Aryan race, Sieg Heil! And the traps, we're pretty good about that. Vest? No, we don't believe in vesting, apparently. Yeah, overall, not bad though. Uh, do we just annex everybody, or what? We have only two tank divisions left, too, so which sucks, but whatever. Yeah, we're doing quite well down here. Like, really flipping well now. Shield broken? Hi, Lutig! Is it just us? Oh, we got all the divisions now. Okay, that's... That makes it so much easier. Okay, thank God. There you go. Um... There you go. Do something like that, maybe. Hmm. You know what? You do that, and you'll be led by Hans. Bea. There you go. You guys do the entire front line here like that together. Uh, you might just be able to go in and just win the war now. I want you all to be over, like, here-ish. Something like that. There you go. And just in case, let's save, just in case... Just so that if we have to end the war earlier, that's great. If not, that's fine. Set, no, almost 20 billion in GDP. Holy fat mothers. Oh, do we have any planes too? Since Shank did leave us? Uh, some jet fighters, not bad. It's going to cost more for our GDP, but I don't really care. I want to win the war. Okay, you know what? Even use some of these guys too. That'd be good. That'd be nice. South Africa. Do any other thing else? Transport planes. We could use that for supply and fuel and whatnot. Ooh. Oh, here's a... Ooh. Devastation. Oh, what is this? More than nine command power, most of these 2,000 infantry equipment. Adds one stability to every state. Regnung in Africa, one time use. Oh, crap. Encourage uprisings. Huh. Poison food supplies, more than negative 99%. Decrease stability. We're currently stage one of our plan to put Africa under total control. The continent is still wild, rampant with rebels that hold vast amounts of power and control various swaths of righteous lands. Also, I want to make sure that we're on medium. Medium for now. Oh, so yeah. Oops. Uh, we can always once every year. Diamonds for men. Increases our GDP, huh? Work the flesh. Ooh. The OFN will intervene. That kind of sucks. Mm. Well, it seems like we should do that one, right? Oh, if this goes poorly, then we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do. But yeah, we should just be able to win now, right? 
Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, it doesn't seem like we can really win here just yet. Over here, we're doing really quite well. Everywhere else, though, not quite so much. I knew a tog. Yeah, that's kind of sucks. How what's going over here? But the infantry seemed to be doing well. The crisp morning air filled the room. The weather in Quillamane was sunny but devoid of the typical tropical heat. A cold breeze from the Indian Ocean brought freshness instead of the usual monsoons. Even Hootig was feeling un unusually satisfied. And that wasn't just because he woke up this morning without the usual splitting headaches. The war was won, the Americana got routed, and the spineless traders in Leopoldville and Windhoek were relieved from their offices. It was a morning of victory. Who took sat behind the desk. The new chair was sturdy and comfortable without being too luxurious. Most importantly, it didn't creak. The stout Hitler took a moment to enjoy his improvement, and then took a t file on top of the massive pile to his right, and in he found a report by the Assets Division's Bayesian Land detailing the growth of resistance activity in the region, and that is needed more troops and recruits and supplies to tackle the emergency. Who took, took a glance at the document pile. If his hunch was right, all those other files would contain the same reports. The only thing that would change is where they happened. But after all, he was now in control over territory that stretched from the Congo Sea to the Cape Town. It was only natural that it would take more effect to control it. Or effort. With renewed vigor, Hutuk took another file from the pile and started reviewing it. So much to do, so little time, my friends. Uh, I should probably honestly stop attacking. Even though we, do, we seem to be doing okay-ish, but not really. Yeah, obviously we're not. We're doing okay-ish. You guys want to hold, maybe? You guys want to help attack, though, where it would be most beneficial. Of course, it's not only us attacking. It's also the Germans attacking as well. So we'll get there. System of repression, system of cleansing, a system of efficiency, the African disaster. To rule a continent... Gather our strength. Arm shipments. Recover the boars. Spark the uprisings. Gather our strength. Loot and burn the way home. Abteilung for Afrikanische Freiwillige. Salt the earth. Close the borders. Hmm. Strict work quarters. I don't know which way is the best way to go first. Purpose of villages. Ooh, more growth. Factories in darkness. Arsenal's in your abode. Raise a jungle. Even more growth. Arms for the soldiers. New states. New policies. Keeping up with the Joneses. A more Burgundian system sounds amazing. Ein Reines Africa. Increased Germanization targets. I like that one a lot. Camp equalization sounds amazing too. Burn them all. Total integration or death. A pure Africa. The Great Purge. GDP growth would decrease by 5%. Oh my god. Decreases GDP. A system of cleansing. Now that we have our resources to do so, we must begin a program to neutralize native resistance. Well, the current situation looks quite grim, given how the traitors' administrations to censor Africa and Swift Africa. Coddle and arm the degenerates, and the Stahlhatler will bring us sorely into a change of pace. The rebels and the arrogance will think they are safe from retribution and are in our very, very, very nasty little surprise. One more tie cup. Our simulation about the Reich's commissariats have gone roughly as planned, and the reaction from the Reich has gone about as poorly as expected, with formal relations being almost entirely cut off, so too has our fiscal aid. And our ability to take in loans from our sole benefactors as, as a direct result, unfortunately for us. That means that we will be suffering in more ways than one from, from cutting ties with the Reich. As our fiscal situation has already been in something of a poor state, this is undoubtedly something of a death blow to our hopes of maintaining a truly permanent solution. This, however, is only something that can be seen on the surface of the situation, and the truth lies much deeper. As an inevitability, our economy will persevere, in spite of the admitted setback. National socialism marches on without the opinions of others being of genuine relevance. The Burgundian system will now allow for our continued existence solely through the power which we can generate for ourselves. The Reichstag will survive as much as it is an inevitability. End of report. Minimal credit rating we set to 1. That sucks. Um, tanks, we got enough motorized too. Uh, Anti-tank is fine, get more guns maybe. Do we, what, what do we need here? Besides tanks. Tanks and planes. There you go. There you go. I was kind of looking. So now we went down. It's terrible. Are you kidding me, bro? Oh, don't get, don't get me wrong. I mean, we still have plenty of reserves, but still. A two point seven, not bad. Oh, we have a de deficit now. Hmm. We have a bigger military, but you know what? I don't care. I'm looking at the growth. A little bit of debt is not going to kill us. Oh, we have the Burgundian system. There's only one individual who deserves a profit from the state, the Aryan. All others are disposable. The Burgundian system embodies the most extreme views of national daddyism, where all non aryans are considered disposable to the state, as all the economic policies. Burgundian economics are defined by an underclass of impure races being exploited to squeeze every last drop of productivity out of them. Many of these of this underclass are slaves, and even those who are not do not thrive. This often drives the Burgundian adherents to more radical ends while expanding the underclass, all in a desperate attempt to stave off the inevitable collapse of such an unsustainable system, according to some. Oh, here it is, yeah, there's stuff. I mean, if we have to go higher, then so be it. So, it's fine. 
And then... I don't want to decrease the GDP, though. Uh, track down the resistance. All across Africa. There are countless small native movements seeking to destroy a civiliza civilizing project for the continent. They scurry in the city slums. Roam across the savannah. Stuck their prey. <clears throat> in the jungle no more. The assets will have to track the whereabouts of every single one of them. They will leave no stone unturned in all of Africa. And only when the last dead junior rebel will bleed to death can we assume total control over the dark continent. And keep going in. Do not stop. Sure, guys. Nice. Pound, pound, pound away. If we could do some sort of encirclement, that'd be great here, but it's not really getting there. Some Bishop British worry about Colonel Vavata Moses' methods. Uh, I just have the opinion of the Office of Colonel Vavata of the present governing situation in the Sambia region presents a potential risk to the security and integrity of the Reichstadt. The relative autonomy granted to the English populations in Zambia produced a society in which natives and white settlers can, for the most part, accommodate one another. However, the situation has also produced the potential for rebel activity, including socialist aligned movements which have demonstrated past ties to the ANC. Such a situation is unacceptable. However, the appointment of Hans Moser to the position of Colonia Vavata, points annexation has to the English, upended the careful balance among the peoples of Zambia. One recent incident which has become a peculiar flashpoint of attention was the arrest and summer execution of three notable black merchants in the Ch Chesselton neighborhood of San Bestiach for suspected guerrilla ties. An open letter written by Michael Gregg, an Englishman, a militia officer, and prominent member of the settler community, has requested that the Colonial Vavata's regime take a letter touch with Zambia to lower tensions and encourage free economic activity. Gregg's letter was accompanied by a petition whose list of signatories is reportedly growing by the day. Is it advised that the central government address these concerns as soon as is reasonably practical? He was right. He should change. Uh, okay. I don't know it's not looking good right now, but still. From Descongos, so the plan to fully aeronize Africa continues. However, we continue to encounter difficulty. Uh, <clears throat> Most of said difficulty comes from the mercenaries whom the former Central African Rakhis Komasa allowed free reign over the territory. Now, that we're no longer giving them work, they're turning their guns on us. Our SS battalions can doubtlessly handle an assortment of mongrel war dogs off their leash. Unfortunately, many of them have fallen in with the native chieftains and rebel bands. And as a result, the savages have been getting increasingly hard to deal with. Compounding our issue is that many of the Untamech, former Rakhis Komasa Mula, treasonously elevated to administrative positions and even to the SS, are still at large. We have reasons to suspect that, like the mercenaries, they are lending their skills to the native terrorist groups. Losses among our SS divisions are reaching critical levels, especially around the Congo Dam. Reinforcements are desperately needed at the dam, as we have reason to suspect that there is a primary target for native saboteurs. Some reinforcements to guard the dam? Yeah. Come on, how can we not win here and just finish off the war? We even have air superiority too, look at that. This is so stupid. Losses. We've lost a lot of people. They've lost a lot too, though. Uh, oh my god, there's so much here. We regret to inform you that the colonial Bevelata on Uganda, Gorg Bakmai, is dead. At approximately 3 o'clock in the morning, that the colonial administrative HQ and Bumstadt were attacked by unknown assailants. In the during f f ensuing firefight, the guards on shift were all killed in capacity, and the building itself was enforceably entered. Colonial Bevelata Bakmai was in his office at the time, working when the attackers entered. And you guys, we're just going to stop attacking. Oh, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. Approximately 45 minutes later, garrison reinforcements discovered the body left along the roadside near the administrative building. The colonial Vavata's eyes had been gouged out, his legs each broken in three places, and his fingers were removed and stuffed in his mouth. All of these injuries were most likely inflicted before his throat was savagely cut. Deputy Colonel Vavata Otto Rima, or Rima, has assumed the responsibilities of the colonial Vavata von Uganda, but survived the Reichstadt assumed direct control of the Uganda region immediately. Death of Rolsteiner. Another morning in Kulamain brought another flurry of papers to the office of Rex Commissar Hutig. Coffee in hand, Africa's conqueror strolled towards his desk, noticing the envelope on top of the pile stamped urgent from the desk of the colonial Vavata, Des Congo's Otto Foschner. It seemed somebody had finally managed to decipher one of the hunting maps that was worthless buffoon Muller had scribbled out with the Reich's time and resources, and had found Rolf Steiner camping with a band of mercenaries at a, near a toppy hood. Steiner had been, in Hutig's mind, the only official in Africa outside of his command who was actually worth his rank. Towards the end of the South African War, Stein had reached out to Hutik, seeking to help in replacing that hot air filled suit in Leopoldville with someone who at least understood that the post of Rex Commissar meant more than a never ending Haya Safari. It was regrettable that a man with such a bright future of the service ahead of him had to piss it all away out of jealousy when Otto Furschner had his name Colonel Vavata des Congos instead of him. 
putting aside vain thoughts of what it could have been. The next comes around and tapped out his reply. Find the water supply and infect it with malaria. Finishing the job. The drill, the drill grounds outside of Quilame were packed with soldiers. It was early morning, but the sky was pitch dark due to the monsoon clouds. The only source of light was the floodlights, shining the harsh white glare towards the fields. But the soldiers in the fields weren't unfazed at all. Even as the rains poured all over their uniforms, every single one of them was standing tall and firm. Each one of these soldiers were the finest examples of Aryan supremacy, the cream of the crop of German forces in Africa, the African SS, and on a stage under the Nazi flag stood the man who commanded over them, Hans Hutig, Stahlet of Africa. How long did I have to wait for this moment, thought Hutig, as he was giving an impassioned speech to his troops. But now I have the power to make things right. I can restore the order to this darling continent. As he finished his speech, a single hail boomed throughout the air, thousands of voices in unison over a sea of Nazi salutes. The SS will now begin their deployment over at the African countryside. And woe to anyone unlucky enough to come into the Crossias. United in purpose, my friends. Find the leaders? Um, yeah, I'll give you that one next, too. Our soldiers are getting discouraged at the prospect of pacifying the territory under our control, given the quality quantity of rebel groups to track. But they have one thing in common, namely, if you can cut the head off the group, they become an untrained rebel. Finding and neutralizing the leaders of the rebel groups must become our top priority if we want to stabilize Africa, and the efficiency and ruthlessness of our SS divisions will bring down the degenerate natives and their fanciful plans. Now, I don't know exactly which way to go here for what to do, so let me know in the comments below. Keeping up the Joneses versus new state policies, let me know which way we should go down here, because I will leave it up to you, because everyone loves... Africa, as well as German management versus African exploitation, war camps versus repurposed villages, and even this, werewolves against the silver, or gather our strength. Should we close the border and, or spark uprisings? Let me know in the comments below, because it's all happy fun times for us. Oh, I love that spike. Ooh, a little bit of death, though. Oh, no. Honestly, this tile is not touched. This tile would be not bad at attack, but they are still attacking us somewhat. Um, I can we just go into here? We honestly should just be able to. If they don't want to attack us, they won't attack them right back. Local military leader Jean Schramm disappears. Jean Schramm has somehow managed to evade the surveillance net we set up. He's not seen at the, any of the usual social clubs he attends, nor has he been observed, leaving his home for a week. A search for his house also reveals nothing to indicate where he may have gone and got a few of my men killed thanks to the booby traps the snake left behind. We suspect that Schramm has disappeared into the jungle to organize the Belgian mercenaries. Speaking candidly, this does not bode well. During Miller's administration, the Belgian mercenary has a reputation a repudiation as the most brutal fighters in Central Africa, butchering whole villages without a moment's hesitation if they suspect a single rebel of hiding there. They've only gotten more ferocious since we've taken over, stalking through the jungle and statistically slaughtering anyone who can get their hands on, German, Anglo, French, or native. Eshram has taken to honing the Belgian's fury with his organizational talents. Together they may form the greatest threat our administration has yet seen. We urgently request that more SS units be deployed to the Congo as soon as possible. Mon Dieu! Oopsie. Uh, Crypto presence. No, nothing here yet. Devastation. Nothing we can really do there, so... Through the, run through the jungle. Ah, uh, anti-partisan activities continue apace. Though recently, dissidents have increased their activity in response to perceived slights by the colonial administration. An activity of note includes a raid on an airfield in southern Namib province. The airfield has been minimally staffed following the conclusion of the South African War, mainly housing disused and damaged planes and raid equipment with which contact was maintained with local governments in West Africa. The base was put to torch by the patrolling SS unit, with hangars and administration buildings raised and a large quantity of explosives detonated on the runway to enter and its further use. It is the opinion of the administration that the attackers targeted the facility and to acquire aviation equipment, perhaps to establish contacts of their own with the local governments, and acquire material support from outside the Reichstag. Particular attention should be paid to any unauthorized aircraft attempting to leave our airspace, and reconnaissance performed to determine the existence of any airframes in possession of partisan groups. Some more men to deal with this situation. We're going in. Let the infantry go in. Because they keep attacking us like crazy, that means we attack them right back. We're done. I'm done playing around these guys. Good. Strategic cycles. I mean, we've lost a lot of guys. I mean, it's supposed to be easier than this. It's supposed to actually be way easier than this, but by when then they just when they just bunch up on top of each other, it's nearly impossible to kill them all off. That's kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. They offer ceasefire? No, no. Why would we ever offer ceasefire or allow ceasefire? The amount of manpower down here is a bit ridiculous too. That, that we have to fight. Are you kidding me, man? Come on, win right here. You can win right here. I know you can. Get over here and cut these three divisions off. Come on, this is so stupid. Why? Why does it have to be this flipping difficult? 
And they're not suffering any sort of supply issues. Like, this is ridiculous. I hate this so much, man. But Royal Hubris reports from the Desk Colonel of Abata to Coast France. As you know, I sent an invitation to Kaigil V, the newly crowned King of Rwanda, to meet me in this palace. This was done for obvious reasons. I wish to know. Hello. What the heck is this going on? Uh, I wish to know him better and affirm our superiority. Unexpectedly, he refused. He sent me a short letter attached to this detailed, uh, detailing said refusal. In it, he expressed his thanks for our congratulations, then told us that he would be refusing any of our offers. I personally do not know the exact reasons why he refused. Perhaps he is being held captive. Regardless of why he has chosen to rebel against us, he is deeper than Uganda, and we have no information on where his whereabouts. We don't have any means to punish him, but there are still actions we can take to provoke his forces. I have personally ordered reprisals to take place across Rwanda. One way or another, we will draw his attention. We'll see how long it takes for him to respond. Hubris only brings ruin. Ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, this is stupid. How many buffs did they actually get here? We do have a cup of coffee, though. Divided Nation, Cape Town Massacre, huh. Oh, look at that buff. Gotta love it. American Training, hmm. Uh huh. Do we have anything here either? Hmm. Picking up the trail. Oh, look at that. Look at the traders. Oh, that's great. Profits from this group, atmosphere of unrest. Oh, we're very quite esoteric Nazis here. Um, uh, American Patrol Waters, of course. Anything else here? Yeah, we don't have any buffs against them either. That's stupid. But on the good days, Wilhelm felt like a warrior for all the Aryan race, helping to ensure that other peoples would not overwhelm the master race on these days. On those days, of course. He did his job with gusto. After all, he knew his job, however tedious, could provide vital to the stability of the German rule in Africa, especially after Huta could take control. Yeah, today was not one of those days, and Wilhelm felt lost in his sea of questions and paperwork. He had not found much success. Amilcar da Cruz, Wilhelm called in his next guest, it was one of the Portuguese. He imagined the man's father to stay during the German conquest of Angola for whatever reason. The man sat as Wilhelm filled with his paperwork. Have you seen this man of any time in the last two weeks? He held up a picture of an African man clad in SS clothing. He was not a person in intimately familiar to Wilhelm, but he did not need to be. The Portuguese man squinted at the picture for a moment. Wilhelm was about to move to the next picture before the man nodded. Yes, I, uh, I think. Wilhelm was taken aback. Perhaps they would get somewhere. Today, he checked the box of papers, scanning for the next question he was meant to ask. What exactly did- where exactly did you see him? Um, uh, rebels against the Silva, find the leaders. Hmm, gather our strength. Ah, either one of these two. African disaster. A system of efficiency. The Dark Shot might be the only light of civilization in the Dark Continent, but it has still us to grapple with the fact that most of the territories under its control are still underdeveloped, and as such we cannot extract as many resources to fill, fill our needs. Given the difficulties, ah, uh, in bringing civilization where there is only jungle and wilderness, we don't have the time to build new infrastructure instead. We'll gather as many workers as possible and funnel them into our already existing mines and factories. With this strategy, we will increase our production in no time. Oh my god, you're going to win here whether you like it or not. I am not going to lose this battle here. You're going to force the attack. I do not care. I do not care anymore. Force it. If these soldiers die, then I don't care. I literally do not care at all. Does not matter to me. You are going to win somewhere here, or you are all just going to die. The trials of the traitors. Good. Fine, thank God. Can you go in here, maybe? You better be able to go in there. This is so stupid. The Leopoldville Courthouse is an exemplar of spotless design principles. The chosen guests filled in the large square room and took their seats in folding chairs. The hot Congo sun overcame the court's feeble air conditioning, and the guests' sweat soon soaked the colors of the dark woolen uniforms, despite the breeze coming through the open windows and doors. At the front of the courtroom stood the sole extravagance that the design or the budget would allow, an enormous judge's bench built, an oaken, built of oak imported directly from the fatherland. Above the judge's chair was a huge photo of the Reichskommissar Hans Hütte, the master of Africa, flanked on either side by the stringing black banners of the Rogros Afrikanische Reichstadt, and crowned by a bronze Reichsadler, whose wings span at most of the bench. The display combined to impress upon both the accused and observers the invincibility of the Aryan justice. Doubtless, the TV cameras uh, being set up around the room would get plenty of footage of that bench. As the cameras went live, the accused traders, ex-Central African generals Hugh von Open and God von Blotnitz, were brought before the bench looking appropriately disheveled. During the trial, everyone played their assigned roles to perfection. The prosecutor ruthlessly questioned the accused, who provided one confession after another, yes. As they supplied guns to the native rebels, yes. They allowed Untermenschen to defile the hallowed ranks of the SS, yes. They allowed the decadent wealth of foreign judeo capitalist businesses to sway them from their sacred task of civilizing the savage heart of Africa all the while. The defense attorney gave stammering, blubbering, half-hearted excuses. After about an hour of this performance, the judge swung his gavel down. I pronounce accused Hugh von Open and God von Blotnitz guilty by treason. The citizen shall be life imprisonment, death by firing squad, life imprisonment. Okay, so. These guys in America has got to be suffering extremely here by being this balls deep in uh, uh, Africa. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. I hate this so much. This is not fun at all. <laughs> this is so stupid. I hate the South African war with such a passion. But the BNUP leaders spot across the Iberian border. From the desk 
Oh, this is so sad. No, we couldn't win here. You know, all that force attack. What a waste. You know what? Screw it. Uh, before we do anything else. Uh, yeah, I'll read this first. For the most part, the regions surrounding Iberian's overseas province of Equatoria, Africa, has been quite opposed to annexation. Many of the local peoples have kept their heads down as long as they don't, aren't interfered with too harshly and can maintain normal economic relations. However, this may be a changing. The Brazilian National Unity Party, led by a suspected communist sympathizer named Marin Nogobai, has emerged as an organization of opposition, or opposing the governance of the Reichstag. Our local informants have noted the regular movements of vehicles between the Reichstag and Equatoria, Africa, and according to them, the drivers are known associates of the BNUP. This may be a regular commerce, but it is very possible that the BNUP is obtaining weapons and supplies for a violent res resistance. Keep an eye on them. So this is our division's reason right now. They kind of suck. The Wehrmacht kind of sucks even harder. Infantry templates. I can't imagine these guys are any good. Yeah, these guys all suck. Oh, this one's not bad, though. Infantry template 6. I apologize for taking so long with this. It just, you know, when the AI just bunches everything up together, it just got awful. I don't even want to bother with any of this stuff. Don't even bother me with it. Too many divisions that we're not going to use, so goodbye, goodbye. Report on dissidents in Kenya. One of the most persistent troublemakers in the Kenya region of the Reichstag is a local leader calling himself the Ker'an, an indigenous or Ker, an indigenous term apparently intending to lay claim to a political representation of the whole of the primitive Luo people. Our local intelligence assets have pinpointed the true identity of the Ker as one of Jaramogi Oginga, Odinga, a recognized chieftain of the Luo tribe in the colony's interior. Odinga has been a known dissident among the earliest days of Aryan dominance in Africa, but now. His nonviolence has led to his activities, largely being ignored in the face of the more radical violent dissidents from other local community leaders. Recently, though, the chaos low-level resistance to the Reichstag's dominion has escalated, and has issued a public call for sovereignty for the Luo, and the creation of a union of the Luo people against the tyrants. Obviously, this is nonsense, and Odinga and his compatriots have no power to resist the Aryan domination in Africa. The so-called chaos is not a serious threat to rule, but the thinly veiled treason of Odinga's decree is still enough to warrant an additional show of force in Kenya. There is a sympathy for Odinga's call to action. A few more gods couldn't hurt us. I'm rooting out the rebels. My team was sent to scout out one of the local several trails above the North Congo Lake. Mula had not fully documented the area, so it was unknown where we would lie at the end. The resistance was unexpected, but nonetheless, we brought sufficient weapons and munitions with us in the event we were to encounter any hostile natives in the area. If that had happened, it would have been simple to, simple to neutralize them. Now, unfortunately, we were beset upon not only by disgruntled natives, but by the remnants of Muller's Mongrel SS. They were well-armed, well-trained, and assisted by Belgian traders. We had little time to respond when they launched their surprise attack, and a significant portion of my team was killed before we were able to return, begin returning fire. After it became clear that there was no chance we would achieve victory, I gave the order for the brigade to retreat. In total, 11 out of 24 men that were assigned to the unit were killed in action, and two more were wounded by enemy fire. I would recommend sending out several brigades, as they have the numbers and arms to beat any single unit with their hands behind their backs. Heavy equipment would not be recommended, as the roads are too poorly made and thin to carry such things. An unsatisfactory performance, unfortunately. We're still fighting the war here, of course. And let's check work quotas. Taxation of the poor. Not bad. System of efficiency decision to use the EAT program workers on construction projects. Our factories are few and far indeed. Though we still have led a con concentrated effort to build up infrastructure and industry, our facilities are still far, far too, too few. Still, it is a far cry from even 20 years ago. Progress has been slow but steady. In the meanwhile, we must get the absolute most out of our factories. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, our factories will churn out material for our efforts. We will gather more slaves in the countryside and fill the workforce of capacity. As Bismarck once said, blood and iron will decide our fate, and blood is in high supply. As uh, we've converted our soldiers all to basically be one same template, as they are slowly attacking your divisions, Hans Hutig is doing okay. We are now have him as a logistics wizard, which is very nice. But I don't understand why these guys will not suffer for any more attrition. I mean, that's ridiculous. Look at that. That's so bad. That's so bad. Burgundy, you guys suck so much. It sucks so much. I hate this war. Why are these divisions all spread out over here? There's a lot of guys around here, too. Hmm. And it's nothing but mountains. This sucks. I hate this war. It says we can win, but that's obviously a lie. We can try to attack here, but that's obviously a lie as well. Look at that. That's so bad. Why does it go down? Why does it go down immediately? This is so stupid. This war is so god-awful. And I'm not going to peace out. There's no way in hell I'm going to peace out. So it's only going to get... Oh, hello. Wait, hold on. Wait, what? Uh, no thanks. We have any ships? Or we have ships ourselves. Now nah, we're good. Now nah, we're all good. We don't need the ships. Now that now we should make some money, right? <laughs> but yeah. Ben, I mean, I don't know what Ben is thinking here. It's already 67. He needs tanking his support like crazy. It's got to be tanked, right? Right? Heavy riding? That's not enough. No. No. We're going to win down here. I don't care what it takes. I literally don't care what it takes. We are going to win. No matter how much I complain. But horrible bosses. A bit of sweat rolled down Hutuk's temple as it dripped down. 
He gave a sharp stare, or glare, to the African that stood in the corner. Recognizing his displeasure, the native redoubled his efforts fanning the straw headlamp, flapping the palm frond frantically. Satisfied, Hutig refrained from voicing his distaste for the man and turned back to... Oh, look at that. The table. Oh, there goes those guys. As I was saying, Mueller may have cultivated a strong industry in Central Africa, but he put it to waste making trinkets for the enemy. We are blessed with a vast amount of free labor, and he lets Americans traffic it away for worthless dollars no more. I have decided the best step for the Reichstag is to continue to nationalize all foreign assets and retool the factories to put them to better use. We do not need foreign capital, we need arms. Africa has no time for the luxuries. Carl gave a serotipitous glances to his fellow administrators, a symbol for the Stahitler's plan. He could see in their eyes that they were thinking the same thing as him. The capital generated by Mueller's admittedly lax and laissez-faire economics was one of the few actual revenue streams they had. Taxing the natives had proved difficult unless they accepted payment in cattle, and the Germans that had migrated hadn't done so for the business success. Stahitler eye. Uh, Carl showed off as he locked eyes with Hutig, his mouth open and closed like a fish. Hutig wasn't blinking. The sun's dragged down. He felt the eyes of his co-workers fitting or flitting back and forth between the two. Ten, fifteen seconds. How could the man not blink? How he could see the tendons of his jaw clenching. Have to congratulate you on your genius of the plan. Hutig leaned back in his chair and his jaw unclenched. He gave a curt nod to Kerr. Carl. Indeed. This will bring security too. He slammed his fist against the table and snapped at the native with a fan. I didn't say stop, layabout. Just two months until you can retire, Carl. Just two months. System of repression. Strict work quotas. Hmm. Yeah. Money. Nice. After the homes. Oh, yeah, sure, guys, sure. To fight the degeneracy that is currently corrupting our nation. Every home must be searched. Every suspect, no matter how tenuous its association with a terrorist, should be incarcerated. Even a terrorist must have a place to rest. The African continent is full of huts and shacks where the native coordinates their attacks. There might be also sympathizers who house as terrorists, whose degenerates are just as guilty as the criminals they abet. Conducting searches in every house will kill two birds with the same stone. Ooh, a little bit of lag, and what's that for? Ah, releasing these guys, maybe? Happy April, everyone. I do apologize that we're taking so long with this. It's just like, I'm not sure what else we can do. Oh, from Namibia. Our administrative capital in Sudwest Africa. Uh, Vinhook is presently under siege by native rivals flying the tricolor of the Sudwest Africa National Volks organization Svablo. Their attack appears spontaneously, without warning from the collaborative not, uh, native forces, whom we can therefore assume to be, be involved. Our local shoot stuff units have successfully repelled Svavlo's attempts to seize control of the city center and enforce heavy casualties in a victorious delaying action against an insurrection, unfortunately. In the process, they have lost control over both the city's outskirts and much of the surrounding countryside to the rebels. The situation here is urgent. The sheer number of dissidents surrounding Windhoek has led to our gears and suffering ammo shortages in dealing with them all. Urgent reinforcements will be required to relieve the siege and free local forces to mop up the remaining participants. We'll have to hold tight. We want the airwaves. Reports from the desk of Colonel Babata's des Angolas, Eric Mosfeld. Investigation of the perpetrators of the raid on the Namib airbase has succeeded in identifying the group responsible. In fact, they have identified themselves. Recently, a wide band radio broadcast has been detected in the stations across Angola. Since in Portuguese, the message claims to be the work of UNITA, the so-called National Union for the Total Independence of Angola. The contents of the message, omitting pointless grandstanding, were called for to the native Angolans to resist a lawful government and prepare for a war of independence. The station transmitting the message is yet to be located, but will soon be destroyed. Local garrison leaders have been ordered to prepare for the possible period of unrest due to the message. It is unknown precisely how many settlements received the message due to the low ownership of personal radios in the colony, though. Its power was reportedly sufficient to be heard in the neighboring Congo. Nevertheless, the Portuguese contents of the message limit its effectiveness outside of Angola. Can we at least combine some of our divisions? Why not? It's not an active combat. How about you guys? This is so stupid. I hate this war. Unlimited supplies, unlimited manpower. Makes perfect sense. Anything we do here? Oh, wow. Why is this so acceptable except for Uganda? Huh. Even. That's not bad. Um, Commonwealth. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Not bad. Better consume goods, though, while the war is still raging on, unfortunately. And there's literally nothing we can do about it. It says we could win here, but that's all a lie. Can you actually combine forces yet? Why can you just not combine forces? You are not in active combat. Combine. If possible. Ay, ay, ay. Infighting's in Zimbabwe. 
And this is the opinion of the colonial Vavata that the impacts of the annexation of the Zimbabwe region have been just detrimental to the continued presence of law and order. While relations between English settlers and native blacks have never been as positive as in regions such as Zambia, the reorganization of military commands has created a power vacuum in which disordered dissent can thrive already. Our government has been made aware of the series of violent clashes between the Germans, Anglos, and native blacks across the country over the past several weeks. In addition, it is believed that the aforementioned power vacuum has been utilized by rebel groups, such as Zimbabwe's of the African People's Union, to regroup and extend their influence. The allocation of additional supplies, material, and manpower is requested. We don't have enough to go around. And Mobutu is found. Our investigation into the plantation massacre of the last week has turned up an interesting lead. We found several diaries kept by the slaves were Mobutu Sese Soko, as to refer reference as an inspirational figure. We also found a note that implied that some of the slaves had been in contact with the savage terror group led by Mobutu. We believe that Joseph Desiree Mobutu, the black savage that the traitor Mueller insanely promoted to a commanding position in the SS, has been turning the SS training against our righteous cause, commanding a terrorist organization of natives and escaped slaves under the name Mobutu Sese Soko. Upon your order, my men will commence a search around the plantation, around for any hidden footpaths that Mobutu's agents might have used to get in contact with these slaves. Hopefully, these trails will lead us right to the snake's den. Trouble near Urundi. A report uh, from the desk of Colonel Babata Kurt Franz. As you know, with the recent death of King of the Urundi, there's been a succession crisis as he never bothered to nominate a successor. This is the Josephia infighting that has rendered the region uncontrollable, as there are several successors vying for the throne. However, I do not believe that this is a significant enough issue for us to intervene. As far as I am concerned, the natives are busy killing each other instead of us or our soldiers. Any resistance to come from Urundi will not come from them, as they would be far too weak to stand up to our might. It would be a waste of men both to intervene now or later. I will continue to monitor the situation. Acknowledged. Let me just add, like, radar here. Just get radar and so we get more intelligence on these guys, maybe. That's ridiculous that we just can't win in some of these states. It's all just mountains. Literally just all just mountains. Hmm. And these guys have no supply issues in mountains. Makes perfect sense. I want to attack down here, but I don't think we'll be strong enough. Yeah, nope. Not strong enough. We'll be able to win here. Nope. We lose inst immediately. Miss Quilta. Render flicked through the sheaf of paper that had been developed. These figures had to be a mistake, but they knew they weren't. His boss had been talking about some new plans for increased production, no losses, shortages, no room for compromise. His friends of Quilomay had let him know of the new quotas in advance, but a fat lot of good would do to him. How can they demand his, this much ammo? They hadn't even been delivered the copper for this month, let alone enough gunpowder for these rounds. He peered out of his office window at the factory floor. The workers were already doubling shifts, not that they had any choice in the matter. There literally wasn't enough hours in the day to make them work longer if he didn't want them passing out on the production line, which left only. He lifted up the production figures for this month. The neat column on the right represented a steady rise. He felt once proud, now he only felt loathing as he took his pen and began drafting another document, one in which the figures were much, much messier. That zero could be turned into an eight. Forging reports. What? To Africanish code, emptying the homes. Hmm. Oh, we want to save that. Actually, how are we doing here? Everything but Uganda is okay ish. Hmm. The African disaster rule of continent? The Boer Republic has been a soft underbelly to hold our to our holds ever since the South African War concluded. The rebels still jump the border, and the country is beginning to descend into complete anarchy. This is, of course, unacceptable. There's only one way to fix the mess that has been created in the South direct intervention. If the Boers are too weak to rule themselves, then we must step in and give our allies from guidance, whether they like it or not. Empty the homes. But we'll first read about the trail is nowhere. My men fruitlessly searched the plantation grounds for a few hours until a local farm boy approached the squad leader. He reported seeing a few of the escaping slaves dis disappearing into the thicket on the eastern edge of the property. Upon further investigation, we found a little footpath here. Upon following this path, my squad meandered for a few miles before reaching a dead end as the trail disappeared into passable jungle. The farm boy who gave us false tip has already been arrested and sent to a labor camp for his deception. The jungle teams of savages and traitors. To fight the degeneracy that's currently corrupting our nation, every home must be searched. Every suspect, no matter how tenuous association with the terrorists, should be incarcerated. Even a terrorist must have a place to rest, and the African continent is full of huts and shacks where the natives coordinate their attacks. There might be also sympathizers who house the terrorists. These degenerates just are as guilty as the criminals they abet. Conducting searches in every corner or in every house will kill two birds with the same stone. Order to the boars, cleaning up the OFN. Oh, peace conference. Oh, better not be us. Yeah. Caucasine, African disaster. What a gosh darn mess. No worse, Africa's a total crap show, plain and simple. Hundreds of resistance movements all throughout the continent is threatening to tear apart a dream of an African-dominated Africa. Mullers and Shanks were too soft with Africans, treating them, bar bargaining with them, even incorporating them into the SS, a disgrace. Still, shifting blame does not change our situation. We need to act, and soon, before we lose the entire continent. Airstrikes, command raids, chemical warfare, nothing is left off the table. We'll do everything and anything to ensure the survival of our state and the people at any cost. Oh, from low uh, leader uh, Eduardo Mondelein arrested. 
I am pleased to inform the Shot Hailer SS of the capture of the known from low leader Eduardo Monlane, who is being held in detention in the KL594. We expect he will bring in much required information about the operations of Frelimo in Mozambique. We have kept his location a secret and expected the organization to fracture after the loss of its leader. I will update the Rex for SS on any further developments. Hi, Hutig. Nice, good job, guys. Look at all the stuff we're out of. Oh, that's ridiculous. This is stupid. Booby trap. No. I mean, it's just all a standstill. Like, America's got to be, like, suffering extremely here. Heavy riding? Is there? There's got to be one lower than that. There's got to be one even lower than heavy riding. Tanu posters on Dar es Salaam's walls. As of recently, a relatively minor independence movement for Tanjika, labeled the Tanjika and African National Union, have come into blows with local representatives of the Reichstadt. Though the movement has been effectively subdued until late, only bringing up minor issues with their ability to govern, its retained influence in the region has now entered a clandestine widespread anti-Reichstadt propaganda campaign, presumably to influence the locals into insurgency. The campaign, although we are as of now unable to stem its flow of propaganda, have been deemed a failure by both myself and my adjutants. Argentines. Its locations for the placement of propaganda are easily recognizable and consistent, allowing us to botch or both catch many active dissidents and prevent their works from being seen by a larger population. The subpar attempt at dissidents by this group, Tanu, signals to us stability in the region, and any and all active dissidents groups are under close watch and serve no threat to the Reichstag. Our risk of insurgency or up uprising is soon to be eliminated, as is is assured. I do not ask for assurances. An unexpected successor. It seems as though the time has run out on the king of Urundi's successors, as a few days ago. All successors to the king of Urundi have been overthrown by militias. In the place, they have installed Michael Mikomero, one of their own. I do not believe that this possesses any kind of immediate threat to hegemony. I only see this in the weakness of the natives. The fact of the matter is that they cannot help to match the discipline of the Germans, or worse soldiers can defeat their best armies. The situation is fine, and order will be restored soon. I will be sending the SS once they are ready in order to finally put an end to the ridiculousness. I will personally see to it that Urundi is stabilized. At least someone is doing something. A little more depth, mm, so be it. Mm, ta tax hike. So stupid here. Monlane's trial. Ah, today the leader of the Mozambique Liberation Front, Eduardo Monlane, has been subjected to a trial in the Kulamane Corrective Camp. After swift interrogation, he was found guilty of all charges against the Reichstadt, a terrorist activity, high treason against the German Reich, and anti Naziist thought. The sentence is death by hanging and will be carried out in the following days. However, if I may point out, it would have been much safer to simply execute Mon Lane right after his sentence was delivered, since leaving him alive might push his comrades to action. Nevertheless, the Quillman Corrective Camp is top notch in terms of security, so the worst case scenario is unlikely to happen. One less tourist to worry about for now. Devastation? Bonus devastation protect? Do we get more devastation? Encourage fine. Uh, gain place stability, that's not really worth it. Right, working the flesh. Oh, we need more workers, huh? How do we get more workers? Is this Why is everything mountains? Everything's mountains, man. Administrative overhaul. Several files were scattered all over Hutik's desk, the contents, running from mundane to the top secret, and all of them were found after months of investigation of the Central African and Sudwest African archives for Hutig. This was something inconceivable just months ago when he had to pester the bureaucrats back in Germania only for his request to get ignored or worse, suffer the indignity of being called a traitor from the corrupt pencil pushers, who couldn't give a darn about the Vaterland. Now all the secrets were on his desk, and all it took was simply to take the initiative after all. If you wanted a thing done well, you do it yourself, Hansa. Still reading the files made Hutig realize that the situation is much worse than he Imagine. The corruption present in Central Africa and Sudwest Africa is so pervasive that they were an essential part of the previous administrations. We might have conquered their territories, who took that, but not their souls. A little so long before we call this part of Africa a nation fit for the Aryan race. What we need is German discipline. Uh, orders to the Boers. The Boers are underlings under the Reichstag. They have no choice but to obey the orders that we give, whether they like it or not. Hutig is a man who has ensured their continued survival amongst the anarchy in Africa, and he can very well be their people's demise. If he so chooses to do so, then they know it. It is time to utilize the Boers, their soldiers, their materials. Everything that they have is now material to be utilized for the survival of our state. So, when are the Americans going to pull out? A blood of school. Nice job. Seriously, like, they, they, they can't continue here. They literally cannot. But... The ongoing instability in the Zimbabwe region has intensified over the past month. A noble, notably, a bloody incident recently took place in the town of Niabera, to the northwest of Salisbury. Niabera has become well known as a place where black farmers and ranchers could find a measure of stability and prosperity. The Casas, a family of cattle ranchers who hold a good deal of influence in town, have seen their farms set attacked on at least three occasions by combined groups of Anglo and German settlers. Thus far, at least two members of the Kasu family have been killed and several whites have been wounded from returning fire. The situation in Nyabira is, in many ways, reflective of the rest of the region, with other towns seeing similar disputes over land and wealth boil over into violence. This is not sustainable. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'll probably have to replay this. 
just because this is stupid and the amount of time this is taking to actually win down here is so ridiculous that I'm almost done with this campaign like this is stupid you, you can't win anywhere we don't have mountaineers we have nothing like that we don't have enough planes to do anything here it's ridiculous and, and just god awful it's literally just still stalemate the entire time Combine them if you can. I mean, you might as well. I'm just we're going through focuses, and I, I know I could I just piece them out, but no, no, hell no. Are you kidding me? How much more descent at home can America take? Can they? Can the Americans really take? There's no way they can keep it up. There's literally no way. Heavy riding has got to get worse. You need to have to a breakdown after this. Actually, who else is invested down here? Is it you guys joined the INS back, right? Yeah, Macmillan. Australia should be suffering a ton, a ton of uh, unrest as well. Update on the situation from Namibia. We discovered deeply worrying news. Whilst we've been successful in the crushing insurrection and executions of captured dissidents are commencing, the situation would have deteriorated considerably between our receipt of reinforcements and their eventual arrival and victory. Swabble units were able to introduce induce the chaos across almost the entirety of Windhoek, inducing numerous casualties and reducing shoot-stoffle control to a few fortified locations. The most worrying part of it all, though, were the reactions of the Windhoek's native Untimensh populace to the rebels' invasion. Reports have arrived at my desk that San Nujoma, Swabo's leader, was seen walking the streets of Windhoek openly during the siege, waving to the rowdy crowds of savages and sharing triumphant cheers with a seemingly large rebel-supporting populace. Investigations are already commencing to discern the identities of those who participated in these demonstrations, but the fact they occurred at all is a profoundly worrying sign of the state of mind of the populace. Anyone who shook Nujoma's hand will have theirs removed. To Africa, code. The Aryan Man is a man dedicated to the Vatherland, to the race, to the capture of Lebensraum, and it is indeed their primal, instinctual will to protect these things, no matter how much sickly, thick, and black blood must flow out of the Untermensch who dare oppose a race's grand vision for this world. The festering, raving, and despicable hives of corruption and degeneracy that were Rexcomacerets under the rule of the flyboy Shank and the hedonist, hedonist, crackpot of savagery known as Miller are testaments to the eternal laws of the Aryan race. The elusive savage, pleasure chasing baboons of native Africa onto the supply hides of our stoic Aryan soldiers. What was the result of this free haphazard blood mixing? Miller's men became one of the apes and wild beasts of the land, chasing creature comforts and throwing themselves into cultures of inherent barbarity. Shank's men feminized themselves until they were unable to even lift a finger against the very insurgents who were their lodging bullets into their necks. Those who continued to attempt to exterminate our race, man to man. We're at the brink of absolute total racial catastrophe, and the only thing standing between us and them is a thin line of those most dedicated, brave, and virtuous Aryan soldiers who beat back the gripping claws of wretched, ever-corrupting Aryan de-evolution. On the orders of our Stadt Hitler, a regime of intense, non-stop training known as the Afrikanische Code, added to ruthless and merciless constant punishments in order to terrify the wandering minds of our troops into conformity, has been initiated on our units. The Stadt Hitler is convinced, in order for the murky, darkened blood of our Aryans in Africa to purify themselves, our soldiers must live and die th hard through a program of spontanism in all things, especially in military affairs. Our missions, goals, and efforts will be pointless if the Aryan's race, if we are working to secure Africa for his tainted, puppeted by very black savages we wish to extinguish from the race, a face of humanity. For the glory of the Aryan race, and we'll read one more focus here because um, I'm sure you guys will comment this thing. You could do this really, really fast, but I, I don't think so. I really don't think, especially with everything being mounts here and these guys wanting to kill off all the boars, I don't think that there's anything that they could do, and this should be this should be a massive drain for the OFN, and it's just... It's not as much of a drain as it really should be, at least in my opinion. But, Southern Exploitation, then? Uh, decrease the influence of the ANC on our politics will decrease. The boards won't like that, huh? Recover African military records. Eh, the boards won't like that. I don't care what the boards want. So let me know which one we should go here. And before we leave off as well, before we do another focus, uh, we're actually doing really well still. Uganda's not doing great, but, you know, what else? Who cares about Uganda, right? Uh, exploitation of the African disaster, I think I read as well. Yeah, I read this one earlier. So if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. But, cleaning up the OFM. The more we involve ourselves in the South, the more we just see how incompetent the Boer administration was. OFN holdouts. Men stranded and left behind from the last war act as trainers for the many native resistance groups. The most notable being, of course, the ANC. This cannot stand. We need to do what the Boers cannot. Purge the countryside and root out the ANC. The continued presence is an insult. It is well past time someone dealt with these pests. But if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. I'm going to replay this off screen so we can actually get this stupid god awful war done, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will continue forward and hopefully save Africa. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.